Hello and welcome. Uh, so, in our last class, uh, we have discussed uh, some special cases of laminate stiffness, where we understood uh, that what is the uh, significance of making some of the uh, elements of the ABBD matrix 0. Uh, say for example, by making the B matrix 0, we could eliminate the undesirable uh, bending extension coupling. Similarly, by making A16 or A260, we could eliminate uh, the sh shear extension coupling. Okay? And therefore, we understood that there are depending upon the stiffness matrix, where some of the elements are uh, made 0 by adjusting the geometrical as well as the mechanical properties of the constituent lamina in a laminate, how some special classes of laminate have been uh, defined, okay? where some of the desired stiffness characteristics could be achieved, whereas some of the undesirable characteristics could be eliminated. Okay? So, in uh, today's lecture, we will try to see the effective effective engineering constants of a laminate. Like if you remember in our uh, macro mechanics of lamina, we actually calculated the average engineering constants for a lamina, namely uh, E 1, E 2, nu 1, 2, G 1, 2. Okay? Similarly, for a laminate also, we could uh, evaluate the effective engineering constants. Even though the stiffness of a laminate is actually characterized by the ABBD matrix, which we have discussed in details. And uh, we also understood that each element of this ABBD matrix is actually function of the lamina properties, constant lamina properties that means properties of each lamina namely E 1, E 2, nu 1, to G 1, to and the fiber orientation theta for each lamina, thickness of each lamina and the stacking sequence that means order in which the lamin lamina are laid up to make a laminate. So, but sometimes uh, it becomes useful to have the average uh, or effective engineering constants for a laminate to have a first hand idea about the maybe the extensional stiffness of the laminate or the bending stiffness of the laminate or maybe the shear stiffness of the laminate or maybe to understand the Poisson's ratio of the laminate. That means to understand the a, a rough idea about the behavior of the laminate as a whole. Okay? Therefore, uh, uh, we could actually determine the effective engineering properties of a laminate in terms of its uh, ABBD matrix. So, we will discuss this today, but uh, it is only possible for symmetric laminates. You will appreciate that uh, we, we understood in the last uh, previous lecture that for an unsymmetric laminate, the bending response and the in plane response cannot be eliminated, okay? they are coupled. Therefore, it is not possible to independently determine the in plane response or independently determine the, the outer plane response. Whereas, for a symmetric laminate, this could be decoupled because B is 0. So, for a symmetric laminate, if you look at this equation, we can actually write for a symmetric laminate, we can write N is equal to A into epsilon naught and M is equal to D into K. I, I think we do not have to explain again what is A and D. We, uh, we all know that A is the extensional stiffness matrix 3 by 3, D is the bending stiffness matrix and because B is 0, therefore, we could decouple this. Okay? So, for a symmetric laminate, it is possible to it is possible to decouple the in plane and the bending response as okay so if we, if we expand this we can write like this nx is equal to a into epsilon naught 
n x is uh, I mean n x n y n x y are the in plane force resultants per unit length epsilon x naught epsilon y naught gamma x y naught are the uh, in plane uh, mid surface strains. Therefore, if we take inverse of this A matrix, we can write the mid surface strains in terms of the force resultants and this is uh, suppose the elements of the invert, inverted matrix inverse of A is actually denoted by star. Therefore, this A 1 1 star A 1 2 star these are the elements of the A inverse matrix. This is nothing but A inverse. Okay. So, this is our equation number 1. Okay. Similarly, we could actually write the moment curvature relationship m x m y m x y could be related to k x k y k x y by the d matrix and if we invert this d matrix, we could write the curvatures in terms of the moment resultants and again d 1 1 star d 1 2 star are actually elements of the d inverse matrix. This is nothing but d inverse matrix. So, we could, wrap, we could write the in plane response and the moment curvature response relationship by independently in the, in the case of symmetric laminate because it is a symmetric laminate. Suppose this is the symmetric the schematic of a symmetric laminate this is a symmetric I think we all know what is a symmetric laminate the definition we have uh, discussed in details in the last class a laminate with a stacking sequence which has a symmetry with reference to the mid surface of the laminate symmetry in geometry symmetry in material properties. Okay. Now, uh, for a symmetric laminate let us try to see how we could uh, determine the effective uh, say Young's modulus in extension as well as effective Young's modulus in, uh, in flexure. So, let us see first in extension. Okay. So, suppose we have a symmetric laminate and we apply only n x suppose this is our this is a symmetric laminate suppose this is x this is y and this is our z the coordinate axis which is actually at the mid surface and it is subjected to only n x. Okay. Suppose this this is say this is say b okay. the thickness of the laminate is h. Okay. Now, so determination of E x So, suppose we have a symmetric laminate and we have applied only n x and all other forces are not there I mean in plane forces n x n y and n x y are 0. Therefore, using equation 1 therefore, using 1 just in the uh, last slide we have uh, shown what is 1 that means, we have expressed the mid surface strains in terms of the force resultants. Now, because here only n x is there, so others 2 are 0. Okay. Therefore, this implies that epsilon x naught is equal to a 1 1 star n x epsilon y naught is equal to a 1 2 star n x gamma x y naught is equal to a 1 6 star n x. Okay. So, we get this right. Now, what is the definition of uh, Young's modulus? by definition of Young's modulus by definition of Young's modulus along 
x e x is equal to sigma x by epsilon x naught. Okay. Now, what is sigma x? Sigma x is the stress applied average stress in the x direction. So, if you remember the definition of n x, n x is actually force resultant along x per unit length. Okay. So, n x is actually the load divided by this length already. Suppose this is say Okay. Therefore, n x is uh, uh, the force per unit length. Therefore, what is sigma x? The average stress along x sigma x is equal to n x by h. Suppose n is the total load, then n divided by b into h is the sigma x. Now, n x is already n divided by b, therefore, sigma x is equal to n x by h. Okay? Therefore, we can write sigma x is equal to n x divided by h and what is epsilon x naught? Epsilon x naught is a 1 1 star into n x. Therefore, E x is equal to 1 by a 1 1 star into h. This is the effective Young's modulus. Okay. This is the effective Young's modulus along x under in plane loading. Okay. That means, in extensional uh, you can you may say that this is the extensional Young's modulus, effective extensional Young's modulus along x. Okay. Again, uh, uh, by definition of Poisson's ratio, again by definition of Poisson's ratio u x y, u x y is equal to ratio of epsilon y epsilon x when only sigma x is applied. Okay. This is the definition of Poisson's ratio. Now, in this case of the symmetric laminate, we have applied only sigma x, no other stresses are there, in plane stresses are there and we know what is epsilon x naught and epsilon y naught. Therefore, we could write nu x y is equal to epsilon y naught is uh, a 1 2 star n x and epsilon x naught is a 1 1 star n x. Therefore, nu x y is equal to a minus a 1 2 star by a 1 1 star. So, this is the Poisson's ratio nu x y effective Poisson's ratio nu x y of the laminate okay, uh, when a load is applied along x direction and what is the uh, strain along y direction that defines nu x y. Okay. So, so, again this is a function of what you could see that E x and uh, nu x y in this case is function of a 1 1 star. What is a 1 1 star? A 1 1 star is nothing but the uh, we get the inverse of a matrix that means, it is a function of a basically. Okay. As we have discussed already each element of this a and b or d matrix is actually functions of the laminar geometrical properties and the laminar mechanical properties. Okay. So, this is the expressions for uh, effective Young's modulus along x and the Poisson's ratio nu x y. Similarly, we can also determine the effective Young's modulus E y, we can also determine the effective Young's modulus 
E y. Okay. Here suppose we take the same symmetric laminate and subject it to only N y. Okay. This is again uh, this is our symmetric laminate, this is x, this is y and of course, this is z. So, this is subjected to only n y okay? and n x and n x y are 0. Okay? Therefore, using 2, therefore, using equation number 2 or 1, I suppose it is 1 using 1. Okay? Therefore, using equation number 1, we get we can write it like this and from this we get that uh, therefore, we get epsilon x naught is equal to epsilon x naught is equal to uh, a 1 to star n y epsilon y naught is equal to a 2 2 star n y and gamma x y naught is equal to a 2 6 star n y. Okay. So, this is a symmetric laminate which is only subjected to n y. Therefore, again what is the average? What is the average stress along y? Sigma y is nothing but n y by h, where h is the laminate thickness. Okay. H is the thickness of the laminate. Therefore, uh, again by definition of Young's modulus. by definition of Young's modulus, we can write E y is sigma y, this is the stress along y and the corresponding strain along y, okay, epsilon y naught. Therefore, sigma y is n y divided by h and epsilon y naught is a 2 2 star h okay sorry a 2 2 star n y okay therefore we can write e y effective young's modulus in y direction is 1 by a 2 2 star h so, this is the effective Young's modulus in extension along y for the laminate. Okay. This is 5. Okay. So, then again by definition the Poisson's ratio nu y x. Now, that uh, load is applied along y and we are trying to see what happens in the uh, x direction, what is the strain in the x direction. Therefore, by definition nu y x is equal to the ratio of epsilon x naught epsilon y naught when only sigma y is not 0, all other stresses are 0. This is the definition. Okay. Therefore, this is minus a 1 to star n y and uh, this is a 2 to star n y, which implies that nu y x is equal to minus a 1 to star by a 2 to star. Okay. So, we obtained the expressions for E x, E y, nu x y and nu y x. Okay. Now, we can see that 
from equation 4 and 6 okay, gives us. So, equations 4 and 6 gives us uh, nu x y by nu y x is equal to uh, a 2 2 star by a 1 1 star. Okay. That means, now using uh, using uh, the expressions for E x is equal to 1 by h a 1 1 star and E y is equal to 1 by h a 2 2 star. This implies nu x y by nu y x is equal to E x by E y. So, we get a reciprocal relationship between the two Poisson's ratios nu x y and nu y x. If you remember, we had the similar kind of uh, reciprocal relationship when we when we studied when we discussed the macro mechanics of lamina. This is analogous to say so this is our equation number uh, seven. This is analogous to nu one two by nu two one is equal to e one by e two for a lamina for a specially orthotropic lamina okay or uh, nu x y by nu y x equal to e x by e y for a generally orthotropic lamina okay so we get the similar uh, relationship now uh, uh, let us see uh, we have obtained the expressions for e x e y and nu x y of course nu y x is dependent on nu x y e x and u y and then let us now uh, sorry let us now see the effective in plane shear modulus okay we take the same symmetric laminate okay same symmetric laminate uh, x y and z but now it is subjected to pure in plane shear nxy okay therefore it is subjected to only nxy and nx and ny other forces are zero okay therefore using 1 because only nxy is non zero so we get this so from this we get epsilon x not is equal to a 1 6 star n x y epsilon y naught is equal to a 2 6 star n x y and gamma x y naught is equal to a 6 6 star n x y. Again, uh, knowing that n x y is the shear force resultant actually it is force per unit length. Therefore, the average shear stress average in plane shear stress tau x y is equal to n x y by h similar to that what we have obtained for average uh, normal stresses sigma x and sigma y. Okay. Therefore, by definition of therefore, by definition of shear modulus g x y is tau x y ratio of tau x y to the corresponding shear strain gamma x y naught. Therefore, this is equal to n x y by h and gamma x y naught is equal to 
a 6 6 star n x y. Therefore, g x y is equal to 1 by a 6 6 star h. This is the expression for this is the expression for in plane shear modulus effective in plane shear modulus of the laminate. This is equation number uh, h. Okay. Uh, next, we can also determine because it is a symmetric laminate. Note that in all the cases when we have applied N x as a response to N x there are uh, there were epsilon x, epsilon y also gamma x y. Okay. Similarly, as a result of N y there were epsilon x, epsilon y and gamma x y. Okay. That means, even though it is a symmetric laminate A 1 6 and A, A 2 6 are present that means, there are in plane shear extension coupling. We could uh, obtain the expressions for effective uh, engineering constants E x, E y, G x y, nu x y under in plane load. Similarly, you can also find out the Young's modulus under flexure. Okay. Say for example, uh, if we consider a laminate which is subjected to only M x, I think uh, we know what is suppose this is your B width of the laminate, okay. this is x mid plane y the coordinate axes are actually fixed at the mid plane okay. and it is only subjected to M x. From our classical lamination theory we know what is M x, M x is the bending moment in the x z plane okay, per unit length, okay. M x is Newton meter per meter. Okay. Therefore, using equation 2 that means, we have already uh, written how we could decouple the moment curvature relationship for a laminate for a symmetric laminate. Therefore, using uh, this relationship I think this is using equation 2. In the first slide we have written equation 1 and 2 which are the decoupled equations for in plane and, uh, uh, and the moment curvature relationship. So, if only M x is applied that means, it is only subjected to a bending moment M x in the x z plane that will lead to that will lead to curvature k x is equal to d 1 1 star again I am repeating this d 1 1 star d 1 2 star these are the elements of the d inverse matrix. Okay. So, d 1 1 star M x k y is equal to d 1 2 star m y m x and k x y is equal to d 1 6 star m x. Okay. Now, uh, going by the definition flexion uh, I mean Young's modulus in flexure how we do that? We know that the bending relationship as using the moment curvature relationship in bending m by i is equal to e by r. We all know this relationship bending moment is related to the curvature okay, in terms of the Young's modulus and the geometrical properties like I mean the area moment of inertia. Okay. Therefore, E is equal to m by i into r. R is the radius of curvature. Okay. Now, therefore, the Young's modulus in flexure along x. So, we write this as E x say with a suffix f to show that it is 
uh, flexure is equal to m by i. Now, what is m? Please note that it is subjected to m x and m x is the moment resultant per unit length. Therefore, the net moment m is m x into b. If this is if this is b, then this is m is equal to m x into b. What is i? Second area moment. Therefore, i is b h cube by 12. Okay. What is r? r is the radius of curvature okay. and what is curvature reciprocal of that therefore, this is 1 by k x. Okay. Therefore, this is b b goes out. So, m x and uh, into 12 and uh, h cube. What is k x? k x is d 1 1 star into m x. Therefore, we can write Young's modulus in x direction in flexure is equal to 12 by d 1 1 star h cube. Okay. This is our equation number, what was the earlier equation number? 10, therefore, this is our equation number 11. Okay. So, similarly, we could also find the effective Young's modulus in flexure in the y direction. So, what we do is, we take the same symmetric laminate. Now, only m y is applied. Okay. This is x, this is y, z, only m y is applied. Okay. So, this is b, maybe this is b, it may be, you may not take it as square, it, you can take this as l also, it will not affect, it will have the same thing. Therefore, so, if only m y is applied m x and m x y are 0, then using equation 2 by writing the curvatures in terms of the moments, this is because only m y is there others are 0. So, we can write k x is equal to uh, d 1 2 star uh, k, k x is equal to d 1 2 star m y k y is equal to d 2 2 star m y k x y is equal to d 2 6 star m y. Okay. Again, uh, using the moment curvature relationship m by i is equal to e by r, which tells us e is equal to m by i into r, where m is the applied moment. In this case, the applied moment is m y into b, where b is this. Okay. i is again b h cube by 12. Okay. And 1 by r is in this case it is k y. We apply m y as the bending moment in the y z plane and the corresponding curvature in that y z plane is k y. Okay. Therefore, we can write m y b b goes out as I told you it may not be b you, can, you may take this as l also it will not have any effect because this will cancel out. Okay. So, m y divided by so into 12 and uh, this is h cube and k y is equal to d y y star d 2 2 star into m y. Therefore, we can now write that Young's modulus along y in flexure is 
12 d 2 2 star h cube. This is our equation number 12. So, we could actually uh, find out the Young's modulus in flexure along x, Young's modulus in flexure along y. Okay. So, these are the uh, this is how we could express the uh, effective engineering constants of a laminate in terms of the, the st their ABBD matrix. How because if you see in all these expressions, it contains the either a uh, ter uh, term from a matrix or from d matrix and h h is nothing but the thickness of the laminate. Okay. Therefore, uh, given a laminate a symmetric laminate of course, we cannot do it for unsymmetric laminate because unsymmetric laminate we cannot decouple therefore, we cannot express this uh, uh, Young's modulus in extension independently okay, because it is also influenced by the, the it is it is for an unsymmetric laminate the in plane responses are also coupled with the uh, moments and curvature okay, like uh, in plane forces causes curvature and moments ca causes in plane strains. Therefore, we cannot do this for unsymmetric laminate. However, for a symmetric laminate we could obtain the expressions for E x, E y, okay, G x y, nu x y also the shear coupling coefficient in plane under in plane response as a function of elements of a matrix and h okay the thickness of the laminate we have also seen how we could determine the young's modulus in flexure okay again as a function of elements of d and h so this gives us a first an idea about the say the bending stiffness of the laminate or the shear stiffness of the laminate extensional stiffness of the laminate or shear extension coupling okay however for a balanced symmetric laminate the shear extension coupling will not be there but for a general symmetric laminate there may be shear extension coupling and we could obtain the effective properties. So, I will stop here today. Thank you.